So we'll just have to <clears throat> we'll just have to watch for her to join us in a little bit. Uh, I want to welcome everyone officially to um, this session six of our Spring Living series. My name is Steve Steine. I'm one of the managers here at the American Indian and Alaska Native Addiction Technology Transfer Center here at the University of Iowa. I'm broadcasting to you from Iowa City today. Um, we are located at the University of Iowa and the College of Public Health. I want to say good morning or good afternoon to everyone that's on the call today. And um, this is again our final session of six. Uh, and I've listed out our, our expected panelists today. I know Jim Weichel uh, had a former um, commitment in his schedule, but he said he would try and join us for the second hour. So we'll look for Jim to join perhaps a little bit later. I will be posting in the chat later as well uh, a short satisfaction survey. Um, really would appreciate uh, uh, your feedback. There are some short answer um, options, so we'd love to hear maybe some, uh, some direct uh, short answer feedback from you about your experience during the Spring Living Series. And we'll reach out to you again post-event via email uh, with another opportunity to complete that survey. As most of you know, um, this event is brought to you by the National American Indian Alaska Native Addiction Technology Transfer Center. As I mentioned, we're located at the University of Iowa uh, on the fourth floor of the College of Public Health. Uh, we're made up of a larger uh, national network, including 10 regional centers, a national Hispanic and Latino center, and a HTC network coordinating office located at the University of Missouri in Kansas City. <clears throat> this project is funded by SAMHSA. And the content is developed by the presenters and the opinions expressed in today's broadcast do not necessarily reflect the views or policies of SAMHSA, HHS, or the American Indian Alaska Native, HTC. As I mentioned a little earlier, uh, we will be reaching out to you post-event um, and we may include any slides that are applicable uh, that the presenter or presenters are um, able to share. And we will also have a link to a short survey that, uh, that you can decide whether or not you want to follow through. The survey is not mandatory, but we would really, again, appreciate hearing from you. Uh, it's important to us and to our funders and allows us to continue to provide events such as this to to everyone. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for that consideration. I know we're gathered here virtually today, but we wanted to take the time to acknowledge the land and pay respect to the indigenous nations whose homelands were forcibly taken and inhabited. Please take a moment to read this land acknowledgement, which was created by three members of our team here at our center. Thank you. Well, I want to again, once again, introduce our panelists today. Um, I haven't had a chance to see uh, <laughs> if Shirley's been able to. Uh... Um, Steve, I'm on. <laughs> oh, Shirley, you made it. Yes, I oh, have. I'm so happy. I, I knew you were having, it looked like you were having trouble logging in, but. Uh... Yeah, I um, I thought for some reason it was at 11 my time, but apparently it's not. <laughs> well, um, and I'm, looks like, oh, here I am. All right. My name is correct now. Okay, we got your name. We got your name shifted over. I know I had sent out, uh, I had sent out some, some links, well, my personal links to, to get you guys in here. So uh, we had to do some name changes. Um, there can only be one of me. I think it's a. I think it's a federal law. There can only be one of me at Zoom <laughs> all the time. Shirley, I'm so glad you're here, and 
I want to uh, just take a, a, a moment again to introduce our panelists. Uh, we have Dr. Dan Foster, uh, Shirley Holmberg. Uh, I'm not sure if Ray is on yet, but we'll look for Ray Daw. Uh, Jim Weichel may join us later. I also have Teresa Subril and Kiawe Bone. Um, <clears throat> all of these panelists are also uh, serving as uh, advisory council members and or consultants with our center. So we're really thrilled to have them back uh, for this sixth and final session on the Spring Living Series. So uh, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for, for joining us. I'm going to take my slides down so I can get a better look at everyone. And um, OK, this is, this is great. We've got a growing audience and uh, Shirley is here. Yes. <laughs> uh, Shirley is our lead panelist today and we're going to um, we're going to open uh, open things up in the right way and I was going to I was going to also uh, just share the title uh, with today's session that we uh, concluded on uh, in a meeting on Wednesday with the panel. Uh, the ser this series for session 6 is entitled uh, it's waking up here. The sunflowers emerge. <laughs> we have we have Shirley to thank for this wonderful title. So, thank you so much, Shirley, for for uh, joining us, and again to see everyone here today to join us in this moment. So, really happy to uh, have everyone on board. I want to turn it over now to our lead panelist, uh, Shirley Holmberg, so she can uh, get us started in the right way get the discussion started as well. So Shirley, you have the floor. Great to see everyone. OK, um, I, I am trying to see. I only see you and down, all the way down to Kiawe. And good morning, everybody. Um, I need to do a view that is full screen or Let's see. Oh, yeah, there we all are. All right. Um, good morning, everybody. And I was going to ask um, Dan Foster, Dr. Dan, if he would say an opening blessing for us this morning. To me, it's morning. It's only 1015 right now. Can you hear me, Dan? Dan. Okay, let me just, can you say, open prayer. He's there, I can see him. I see, I see Dan. Dan, can you hear me? Dan. Can you hear me? Steve, is there something going on there? I'm not sure. Um, we we had Dan, we had contact with Doc Foster earlier. I see him. Uh, maybe he's just deferring. He is doing something. Anyway, I sent him a a chat and And I'm being very impatient. And he has, okay, there he is right there. He's, he's looking at his phone. He's having trouble with getting his audio. Okay. He was on earlier. I know he had. Yeah. I know he had a young one what's in his lap earlier. Maybe <clears throat> hit, uh, hit a button or something, Doc. Uh, okay, so there's two of him now. One yeah, is under he, Steve Stein. I think he's using. Uh, I think he's using his phone. To, uh, okay, he switched his, over. His yeah, there we go. Yeah, he he was listed as Steve Stein. Good morning, Dan. Got him back now. Can you say an opening blessing for us, please? Sure. Sorry, I couldn't hear anybody. I could <laughs> see you, but couldn't hear you. 
want to welcome everybody this morning. What what a tough times and what awesome times at the same time. Every time we say goodbye to someone, we, we have so much more appreciation for the living. And uh, every time we say hello to someone, we have appreciation for those that they'll never meet. And so I, I don't know all of you, but I welcome you. And, and I, I think I'll give a, a, a Thanksgiving song. One of our daughters is named Wakshazi, we, which means uh, the yellow flower that faces the sun. Mm -hmm. So her name fits this meeting today. <laughs> and so we're gonna just, just open with a Thanksgiving song. Don't I share la my We chose Aniwa Maya Kucha Pila Maya don't I share la pila my ayelo, pila my ayelo, pila my ayelo. We chose Aniwa, my Akuta, pila my ayelo. Wokla, how matakuyas. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, relatives. Anabasi. Anabasi for that song. Um, <clears throat> so this morning, I, I would just like to do an introduction of myself for those that don't um, aren't real familiar with me. My name is, uh, <clears throat> English name is Shirley May Holmberg. And I am, I was given the name um, Yindadlano from one of my aunts. And Yindadlano is after my great grandmother on my grandpa George Jimmy's side. And when they only had, or we only had, uh, Athabascan names. Um, I was born in a place called Hohudota Tlatlilten. That's Tanana, Alaska. It's where the Tanana and the Yukon rivers meet. And the name means something about where the willows grow. Um, the clan that I come from um, Athabascan, the word Athabascan was given to us by somebody else, um, an explorer in Canada that was wandering around down there, asked his native guide, um, um, what, it, what is this place? And his guide told him that it was Lake Athabasca. And who are these people? Well, I guess that they're Athabascans. And so the, the people of Lake Athabasca and from that point, west and north, we all became known as some sort of Athabascan all the way into what's known as Alaska. And up here we say we have uh, 11 dialects of the Athabascan language. Tonitzagaltzithna um, means uh, middle of the river people. I come from the middle of the river. And when they say middle of the river, the river is known as the Yukon River. And my people lived on an island in the middle of the Yukon River. And we recognize two other clans, um, the Bidzich Tahatana, which is caribou people, and then the Nolcin, bear people. They were on either side of the river. 
and they used to fight with each other. And I was told that our people were peaceful people. We didn't get involved with the fighting. Um, there's all kinds of stories about Tony Zagalcina and the other clans. In our old way, the eagle is the one that represents us. Um, we're matrilineal people. I am 3,000 years old. <laughs> I'm 70 years old. Um, I will be 3,001 next year. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm 70. I feel like I'm maybe 34. My brain, you know, is always learning, wanting to learn. Um, but my body tells me that I can't jump anymore. So um, I can't run as fast as I used to run. Um, but every, everything seems to work okay. My body seems to work okay. My, my mind is awesome. Uh, my uh, spiritual beliefs are intact. Um, mentally, I'm, I'm pretty pretty darn sharp. <laughs> I see some people my age that are in retirement and um, they don't do much anymore. And I, for some reason, I'm probably like my mother who at 91 was still driving. Um, so I'm 70 years old. Um, I'm also um, 35 years clean and sober uh, as of April 30th of this year. A um, couple of different milestones there. I have two adult children. Their names are Sia Cooney and uh, my son, that's that's my daughter, and then my son is uh, James L. Grant Holmberg, and his Athabascan name is Ya'a. My daughter's name means um, mine alone, and my son's name, Ya'a, means anything. This is uplifting. Victoria uplifting or skyward. Um, I have a significant other. His name is Terry James. I'm from uh, Tanana and he is from uh, Fort Yukon area from Guichaje people. Uh, we live in Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, currently, um, <clears throat> I do work for a radio station. It's the only native owned radio station in, I believe, Alaska. It's board and it's uh, operators and everybody connected with it are all primarily Athabascan people. But it uh, broadcasts to all of the interior villages of Alaska, as well as uh, Bethel and uh, Chon FM and Whitehorse. It, it's connected all the way through the interior of Alaska. And then on each end of it, <clears throat> it's connected to the Yupik people and the, the um, Athabascans on the other side over uh, in Whitehorse area. Also available on the wor World Wide Web. Um, it's pretty awesome. Um, the Athabascan Fiddlers Association owns it, and I, I do uh, coordination of that festival. It's a four-day uh, uh, music festival, and it's it's a busy time during during Veterans Day, and during that week we have four days of uh, music. And used to be mostly fiddle music. Now it's it's you know my age music, 
Kiawe age music. It, it's everybody, you know, everybody's age music. Um, and it, it it's a it's a big big thing here. People fly in from all over. We fly in musicians, native musicians from all over. Um, they come they come walking here. <laughs> And the music, like what the first night is like from seven to midnight, and then the next three days it's from 12 um, p.m. to 12 a.m. And the band changes every half an hour. So if you can imagine that, it's pretty darn awesome, but good time for everybody, you know. Um, no alcohol is allowed. No, no. Uh, that can't be around there because there's a lot of elders and stuff like that. We're very uh, aware of our elders and not uh, uh, harming them in any way. <clears throat> and I can't talk forever. Um, I was talking about during this time of the year and most of our Zoom um, meetings, have been talking about this time of the year from the different areas. Um, I live in the interior of Alaska. And during this time, like right now, just in the last few days, the buds came out on the trees and then we now have leaves. <laughs> All of a sudden we have leaves. Um, I was talking to the rest of the panelists when we we're planning on what I was going to talk about. Um, <clears throat> I travel around quite a bit and went to a village called Northway, Alaska. If you take the Alaska Highway, you know, through Canada and up into the interior of Alaska, you go through past Northway, Alaska. It's about 50 miles from the Canadian border. And I had traveled down there to do some work around um, teaching children how to keep their body safe. And the school had invited me to, to work with all the grade levels. And in small schools, as we all know, in some of the um, rural areas, um, they combine grades. So I, I had an audience of like um, K through seconds, three to five, six through eighth, and then ninth, and then the high schoolers. And they're trying to do this type of thing before summer starts and before school gets out so that if any of the children are experiencing something, then the school and community members, counselor people, and you know whoever can be aware of it. Um, and I had fun down there, but when I went down there, as you go further, like east and a little bit south, the terrain changes. The weather's different. Different things are happening because it's springtime. My sister lives on a hill down there, and I stayed with her. And there's a lake below it. And you could hear the swans talking with each other. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about, but they're talking. And that's a sign that it's, it's you know, springtime when all of the summer birds come back, they're, they're summer birds to us because they don't live up here year round. Even the eagle moves further south. Um, there's a big gathering place in Haines, Alaska where the eagles hang out in the winter because there's still uh, food there for them. <clears throat> You could go to Haines and drive near there and you'll see trees just full of eagles. Um, 
never I had never seen so many eagles in all my life in one place ever. I mean, there were hundreds. Um, <clears throat> anyway, when I went to Northway, one of the other, well, a few of the other things I saw was that um, I had to drive by this slough and I had to cross a bridge and there's a tree there. And usually I just see one eagle. That eagle comes back there every year. But this year I went and there were two eagles, male and female, sitting on the same branch together, side by side. So that's another sign of spring when the eagles come back. Um, ravens, you know, not too long ago were busy pairing up and, you know, mating. They were doing their thing in the sky. Um, another sign of spring. Another sign of spring, one of my friends put on Facebook when the, the river, Yukon River, when it breaks up, it's, it's something amazing to see. Maybe some of you have been blessed to see a river break up. And I, I saw it one time in Tanana. I asked this elder, my elder aunt, I kept asking her, um, is it going to happen today? Is it going to happen today? Oh, no, no, school, not today. Um, is it going to happen today? Is it going to? Oh, no, no, not today. And one day I went to her and I said, is, is, is it going to happen today? And, and she was like, yeah, it's going to happen today. So all day I was waiting for the river to break up and going down to the bank. And the Yukon is a big, huge river. And <clears throat> all I heard was this big, loud, cracking sound, loud, cracking sound. And all of a sudden, the ice moved. And pretty soon, the ice was breaking up. You had to stand there quite a while. And I was standing on the bank and there's some kind of sensation or some kind of, um, it's a spiritual thing, I'm sure. We say the spirit has, uh, the river has its own spirit, right? So you're standing on land and the ice is moving and it feels like the ice is moving this way, the land is moving this way, and you're moving this way. It's a weird, weird feeling. And it's part of springtime. The river's waking up too. Um, and it lasts, I think it would last as long as I wanted, wanted it to last, but it was so unnerving to think that even in my mind that river is going this way, I'm going this way. And then I had to collect myself and say, no, you're standing still and the river is moving. So that's another big sign of spring around here. I know in Tanana, there's a story about a man that ran across the moving ice to an island. And you know, that's that's something that men men would do. But he made it all the way across. And I think him and just a few other men might have done that. <laughs> I can't I can't imagine running across that wide, wide river to the other side on moving ice. Um the plants around here are um, springing up. I grew huge, like 13 foot uh, sunflowers, huge sunflowers. We have a 
uh, where I live, it faces the sun all day long. We get sun here. And I grew sunflowers for the second year in a row. And these things were like amazing. And I just threw seeds in there, right? And that was last year. Well, <laughs> this year I'm walking by and it's still a little bit cold out. And I looked down in our where we planted those sunflowers and there were sunflowers coming up. I didn't plant them. They just started coming up. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing what God does. I mean, in my language, we say dinahto. It's amazing what he has happened to um, just brighten. That, that brightened my day. I was like, wow, something I planted last year grew this year without me putting seeds in the ground. So all kinds of things are happening. It's it's green. If you look at the hills, we're, we're surrounded by hills on uh, a couple of sides. And there are, it's just green over there. And I see uh, Teresa's walking there. She's in green. She's, <laughs> it's greened up there. And Kiawe showed us the other day where he's at and I'm, I was jealous. <laughs> Everything was springing apart already some time ago there, but it's different up here because we're still getting, uh, yesterday was like 58 or 59. Oh no, no, before I came home, it was like 69. Um, the sun comes up about mm, 6.30 maybe, the sun is up. And last night when I came home, about 9.15, the sun was still up and was going down. It's amazing here. Um, we don't want to talk about the solstice, how soon that's coming. <laughs> then we start lo losing time. But it, here, it's amazing. We looked out our window. And there was two mallards, a male and a female, walking by on our little sidewalk out here. <laughs> it's like, that's a sign. Um, porcupines. Porcupines are out and about. Um, Teresa sent me a few photos of porcupines that she ran into in her area. But we've seen porcupines. Um, one of my uh, daughters, when she was young, she had an ex from Northway, Alaska, but there's, a, there's photos of him getting a porcupine for his wife who likes to do porcupine co-work. And we also eat the porcupine, use the quills and eat the porcupine. Um, all kinds of wonderful things are happening and of course life goes on during this time of the year um, oh i also went to denali park and if you go to denali park i was there last week um it's about where northway is it's about 250 miles east south kind of east from here and where denali park where i live the distance is about 120 miles. It's in the mountains. You drive up in the mountains. And there, it was still winter there because of the elevation as well as um, it's cold there. In the mountains, it's cold. Uh, my son who works there said it, it had snowed the last four days. <laughs> So over this way, where I'm at, it's getting sunny and bright. And in the park, they're still getting snow. And the mountains, like the uh, what's supposed to be green, uh, is still a little bit brown. Um, 
he did send my son sent me a, or put it on Facebook on his page. A brand new baby moose. A mother and its baby that the moose looks tiny compared to the mother, but moose are huge. <laughs> and the baby, I don't know, it, it, it was just born. So all kinds of great things are happening up here. And I'm just excited about spring. Um, Truly, I'm, already, I'm already thinking about berry picking. Um, Steve just put up a yes, the calendar. I wanted to share that. Uh, I'm sure. Okay. Steve just put up a calendar here, and I don't know if I could make it. Can you make it a little bit bigger, Steve, or can I make it? I can make it bigger. Oh, there you go. Yeah, let me see if I can. I, I tried to get it. To... I, I just moved it on my side, so I made it bigger. Can, can folks see this all pretty clearly, or do I need to make it bigger? Okay, we can see it. Okay, great. I'll okay, so, so, um, this lady that uh, Catherine Atlas, she's from a village called Huslia, and she she was she's now gone um, to the next place, but she was a culture bearer and very uh, revered, you know, by people, our people, and she was very knowledgeable about everything. Um, if you look at this, it looks like a star, but on the inside, it has the, the non-native calendar months, you know, how, how we know it. And on the outside is how the Athabascan people look at it, you know, and you can see that during this time right now, we're in May, we call it springtime, Loko. And next we're gonna come up to, uh, it, it's summer, middle of the summer, or it'll start summer, um, real, you know, real summer for us and fishing and all of that will be happening and berry picking and all of that gathering. Um, Right now, I think all, all we can pick or get is probably some of the greens, you know, it's kind of like salad and some of the um, roots. Um, and I don't think tea is ready. No, tea is not ready right now. Um, but we're, we're always, um, Athabascan people are always looking for food, you know, what food to store. I remember a long time ago when I was young, we we lived in a um, in a winter time in a tent, in a, a white wall tent in the winter time. But I remember we used to have um, cold storage and it was in the ground. You know, it was like a <clears throat> not quite a root cellar, but it was in the ground to keep things cold. Um, I also remember that we didn't have a like a formal outhouse. <laughs> we just had a stick, two Y poles and a hole in the ground, and that was the toilet. <laughs> um, but this time of the year, um, you can see that it's uh, supposed to be, you know, sunny and bright and, and it is, for the most part it is. Um, there's been some flooding up here um, because of, the amount of snow we got this year. Um, but, you know, life goes on. And during this time of the year, also, we have um, uh, deaths are happening. Uh, seems like in the springtime, uh, deaths happening all over in the interior, some natural, some, you know, for other non-natural reasons um and seems like we're always despite you know spring happening and everything else we still have to deal with this um death thing and memorials and potlatches and um 
some great things are happening. Uh, we have a lot of young people, of course, all over graduating from high school, graduating from college. Um, the millions of birthdays. If you have millions of relatives, you got millions of birthdays <laughs> celebrating each other. Um, it's a good time to do it. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm just excited about, I'm excited about everything growing. I'm excited about, um, you know, just, you know, the promise of summer. <laughs> I'm excited about going on a boat ride. I'm excited about, I was at the graveyard yesterday and, um, or the day before and excited about going up there because we have so many people that are up there put away um buried up there in our native graveyard it's um it's it's a good feeling i, I was trained um not to think negative about death death is a part of life um and I go up to the graveyard and I'm excited about our family gathering together up there and, you know, uh, fixing up our graves, you know, all of the stuff that we do up there in the spring. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, do any of our panelists have anything they'd like to share? Teresa, Kiawe, Dr. Dr. Foster, I like to call him Dan. Kiawe? Well, when, when you were talking, you said something that uh, in my teachings um, of a story that I know. And uh, it's, it's really, it's, it's the most, one of, one of my favorite stories. Um, you said, uh, that your legs don't allow you to jump as they used to. And I, that took me straight back to a story of, of change. And it's, it's called the blanket story. Um, I'm not sure of who all's heard it, um, but uh, I could, if, 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 if no one minds, I think I could keep it to about a five or six minute. I'll try, okay? You guys give me a signal if I need to wrap it up. Um, but uh, it's, it's such a beautiful story. A uh, long, long time ago, uh, there was a young boy. And this young boy had just lost his mother to a great sickness. And not long before that, his father to a great war. So this boy was all alone in this world and left a fin for himself. And I, I see that, uh, yes, he's setting the timer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, he was all alone in this world. But he had noticed that uh, some of his elders were having some difficulty doing some things. So he started to go and help his elders out. And in turn, they did things for this boy. They would cook him a nice hot meal for him to eat. They would <clears throat> mend his clothes or make him new clothes. And after a while of helping his elders out, uh, they had run out of gift, things to give this young man and continued to help. So they started to teach this young man. They told him all the stories that they were told when they were little. They told him, or taught him how to hunt, how to fish, which plants to use for medicine, which plants to use for food. They taught him a great respect for all things and all people. And as this young man grows in, or young boy grows into a man, he wants to uh, have a big, big family. In his mind, he has the biggest family, and it's beautiful in his mind. So he goes up into the mountains and he builds himself a beautiful, large, biggest house he's ever seen. And he wants to fill it with children. So he goes to a neighboring village and he makes prayers for things the way that he knows how. He 
finds a young lady and he loves this young lady. She moves in with him. They're very happy together. One day they find out that they're gonna be mom and dad. And this fills this, this young man with the joy that he has never known. And so when that baby comes on this day, he loses his best friend, the love of his life, his wife. But on the other hand, he gains a boy, a baby, his son. And he loves his son. He teaches his son how to walk, teaches his son how to talk. He teaches his son how to hunt and how to fish which plants to use for medicine, which plants to use for food. He teaches his son a great respect for all things and all people. And his son too grows into a man and wants himself a beautiful wife. So he asks his father to make a prayer and he prepares things the way that he knows how. And his son goes to a neighboring village and finds himself a beautiful wife, but he does not make a house of his own. For he grew up knowing his father's longing to have a big, big family that he had never got. So they ask this young lady to come and move in with his dad. Now this new father, as they get pregnant, this new father has to spend all of his time hunting and trapping and looking for food. He's got to provide for this family. And the new woman of the house is taking care of things as the way that she knows how in this baby. She is preparing the garden. She is doing all the things around the house, making it a home. But this new grandpa gets to spend all of this time with his new grandson. He loves his grandson. He teaches his grandson how to walk, teaches his grandson how to talk starts teaching his grandson how to hunt and how to fish, which plants to use for medicine, which plants to use for food. He teaches his grandson a great respect for all things and all people. And he starts telling his grandson all the stories that his elders had told him when he was a boy. But as time goes on, things, weren't as they used to be. Grandpa's hands can no longer hold things as they did when he was younger. His legs will no longer carry him as fast as they did when he was a boy. He could no longer run and jump as he did when he was younger. So these new responsibilities fell onto the mother of the house and she took care of them for a time. But one day they got too great for her so she called her husband to the back of the house. She said, I wish to take care of you and our son, but I no longer wish to take care of your father. You must tell him to leave. And this young man says, his new father says, I, I cannot do this. You know, this is my dad's house. You're crazy. You know, you can't ask this of me. And she says, well, if you do not, then I will take our son we will go. So he went and he spent some time alone to think about this. And as he thought, he could hear his thoughts. I love my father, but I love my son. My father has taught me everything that I know. I spent every day with my father. I have so much to teach to my son and a long way to go with my son. I love my father, but I love my son. So he goes back to the house and he says, you know, you're right, but I can't bring myself to do it. I love him too greatly. If you want him gone, you're gonna have to do it yourself. This task was too difficult, even though she agreed to it. So 
she called her son to the back of the house. She says, son, take this blanket, grab your grandpa by the hand and lead him as far south as you can walk. When you get there, I want you to give him this blanket. Come back home, he'll know what to do. This young boy says, well, when's grandpa coming back? She says, son, your grandpa's never coming back. Tears fill this young boy's eyes. He says, I love my grandpa. Why would you do this? Why would you ask me to do this? And she said, don't ask any questions of me. Just do as I tell you. So with a heavy heart, he took the blanket grabbed his grandpa by the hand, and walked him as far south as he could go. Now his mother is waiting on his return. She sees him coming to the woods. So she goes to meet him, a closer inspection. She sees he's got something draped across his shoulder. As she gets closer, she sees that it's that blanket. She becomes infuriated with her son. How dare you be so selfish? I told you to give that blanket to your grandpa. How are you so selfish that you disobeyed me? Why are you so greedy? Why have you disobeyed me? So he looks up at his mom and he says, I did as you asked. I took this blanket from grandpa by the hand. I led him as far south as I could walk. And I did give him this blanket, but I only gave him half. Because one day I'll give you the other half. She understood what her son was saying. She said, okay, son, go get your grandpa. <laughs> and this is why we tell this story is that our elders are gems of precious, precious, precious value. But when they leave us, if they have not perpetuated their knowledge within us, and we do not carry that torch, that flame, to encourage and to do better with our world and the knowledge that they have given us, then they die with that knowledge. Our elders are no longer useful and no, neither are we. So with that, I, I, I got that from your message, Shirley, and I appreciate you guys being, you know, coming this to me to be able to speak I'll, I'll let other people go if there's time. I, I could, uh, okay. On, on a bus, Kelly. I always appreciate listening to your stories and just listening to you because you're such a cool young man. Um, Teresa or Dan, do you have? Anything you'd like to add? I can, but if Doc Foster looks like he's ready to go, I'll let him go first. <laughs> go ahead, T. All right, trying to find a spot to kind of set then. <laughs> um, just listening to everybody. And I was thinking about we were, when we were planning this, we were talking about all that spring into life and the plants and the garden, and the seeding. Um, and can everybody hear me all right? Yeah. And um, so I thought, I think about White Water Lily and her story, her creation story, how she come from Star Nation and would come on down in our area here and I'm sure there's no widow makers above me. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, she would eavesdrop on our stories along the lake shore as we would tell our stories. And she loved hearing our stories so many of our stories changed and I don't think that would put a smile on those old ones faces that knew the stories because the lessons and the beauty and just the importance and everything and the blessings in it but um she ended up giving her life and turning into white water lily so she could stay forever and hear our stories and so that's one of the plant beings and right now she hasn't bloomed her flower yet but 
all these others, I don't know if you can see around me, um, that are coming up. The fiddleheads, I was woo, surprised for, and um, I sat on a rotted one and knew it. So anyway, um, but I'm in, in a kind of marshy area, so this is it. Um, the fiddleheads that came up, I was so surprised for. I went out to this other area of the woods, a 10 minute drive or so down the road. And I, I went real far in the other day and down the, and people don't really seem to go down that path. The old trains back in the 1800s and even, or, you know, earlier than that and more recent didn't have policies and did a lot of derailing and spilled a lot of arsenic acid and different things. So those old train track areas kind of are toxic to gather from and that's that spot out there, but there's so many plant medicines that grow. And I just wanted to see who sprung up, who came back, who is new. And there was a bare block in my path. <laughs> so I had to turn around and and as I'm going back, this big old, old timer porcupine was heading straight at me and gave no cares. I never see one so stubborn in my life. And he wanted me to go off path. And then when I said, go on your way and I'll go on mine, we have to separate here. Um, he looked at me like I am going my way. <laughs> And so we had a little bit of a situation, but I thought about all you endured, how many seasons, cougars, bears, wolves, how many he beat to be that old. And I wanted to tell him the stories, but as we parted ways, he went up this tree and I could see, he looked back and then he got curious like I did. And I kind of wanted to go back. He kind of wanted me to come back. And I wanted to tell him the his stories that we tell. And but I knew I had to leave him go. Give him a little heart attack, that old guy. It's not healthy for them, those adrenaline stress, just like us. So I went on my way. If I'm to see him, I'll see him again another day. But coming out here, just like white water lily, um, these plant beings love to hear the stories. And so it's now or never with the seasons, with the leaks, or some people call them ramps. <laughs> So I, I better get out here because we're going to get a lot of rain and get what I can while I can. And um, I know I get reception in this spot here. And, um, and as with life, you're surprised. You don't know who you'll find, what'll happen, what'll come, what you'll end up doing. You may have a plan. You may decide or, and it's important that things should turn out a certain way. The needs are there, but things end up as they end up. And when I was out in that woods the other day, I was hoping on Fiddlehead. Because of life, I couldn't make it out to the woods to go look for Fiddlehead and get Fiddlehead. And there was only a couple. And so I left them. And it is what it is. You have to accept as things are. And so our teachers are all about us. And when I came out here to get those leaks, I uh, found fiddlehead all over. And so I am blessed in when we walk our path and we do what we're supposed to do. And I was hoping they would be blessed to hear the stories today. As they can hear with my phone, you know, the, the volume open, these plant beings and hear about how we're excited for them to come back. and see them and I am I'm seeing so many and I'm getting to say hi and the more you know the more you know nothing and like he always said once those elders are gone so is that knowledge so I spend more time greeting them with who are you I, <laughs> I could tell you're special and so to get to know them and develop those relations and their stories to find what you can about them it is doesn't always come as you hope Sometimes it takes many years of walking your path until you run into their stories. And, um, and every time I sing, these winged ones will come flying in and whistle. And as soon as I stop, they leave. 
and it i don't have the world's greatest voice they love us to sing our song find your song if you don't know the words hum it hum and that vibration as some people call it is so powerful so important so healing and so yes this is the time of celebration in so many ways of all these lives around but also um these little buggers and also um the nutrients in the food it's so needed that's coming after a long hard winter i seen a beaver the other day and just before that i seen one in that same spot that was like that porcupine must have been the elder beaver and it was so large and beaver doesn't hibernate and has a hard time being low to the ground like that and in the winter and so beaver too when spring comes is just like oh my gosh i made it and i'm going to go get all of these nutrients and they're they're two worlders they walk and live in the water world and in the four lake world and so the other day i'm heading to town and i seen a younger one in that same spot dead on the road must have been a little excited or distracted and and um, sometimes we are when we're weak with illness or lack in nutrients and um and that one died and is left to lay there by that elder one who made it so many seasons and i think about them there are teachers of family there are so many teachers to us how wonderful the beaver is they carry so much medicine so to think about all of these different lessons in our needs and our foolishness in the cost of in our loved ones you know and and where the solutions are you know and so you know and of course speaking of foolishness it's somewhere in this neck of the woods last time i was out here um the the leaks weren't ready yet and <laughs> i was checking on a couple were and i i put my glasses in my shirt and I lost him somewhere out here. I need a new prescription anyway. And I've been avoiding that appointment. <laughs> so the woods is seeing to it. Is seeing to now I have the nudge. I have to do it. So, you know, you get these gentle spankings. And, and also that um, we won't say his name because it, there's no longer snow coming, covering the ground. But that, that uh, trickster, the foolish one. You know, we all are are like them in ways, a little foolish, and to remind ourselves not to become so complacent, so lax, and to remember to be grounded and aware of our surroundings. And I don't when I'm in the woods, so I'm trying to become more. I just, I'm, I'm like uh, free. <laughs> I'm home. It's so good. No matter how ill you are. You come out into the woods and you feel much better. Take it slow if you gotta. But whatever's still standing out will let you know what you need to be taken care of. And you can sit down and think about, is this because of how I've been eating or years of what I've done to myself? Or is it due to stresses and dysfunctions or, you know, and then how do I take care of this and how do I heal this because we're given new cells every day creator gives us a new chance every day but we have to support that wholly in every way so you know if you gotta walk slow walk slow but make that time you know we have that time it's tv or it's going to the mall or we can always make that time and so make that time to go and go home it's reconciliation it's decolonization how many fought for us to be here and fought for us to have these rights and here we are so you know i give thanks to that every time i'm out here there's so many i think of and give thanks to that you you think about how did that grow there and that bird that passed those seeds the winds that did so i give thanks i'm always out here just it's, it's humbling, but you feel the love and you see the importance of our simple roles in life. And those are individual and family and just being a community member and carrying forth our beautiful truths and finding those truths, chipping away at washing away at what started those truths. So 
to get good again. Anyway, I'm going to pass this on so others can speak and get back to gathering. And I'm going to go ahead and be a, a Heoka because in our way, the oldest uh, will speak first. But but I and I am the oldest, but I might not be the most mature. And uh, uh, but I, I went backwards. I went ahead and went the west way, the west wind way. And you heard Teresa speak of the widowmakers, and the widowmakers come from the wind, but also from the age and the tiredness and the. The, the breaking of the tree. And so it's the wind that will release those widow makers, but maybe you might get out there and look at that awesome fern beside her. Wow, our ferns aren't up yet, awesome. And uh, uh, if you don't look up, you won't see it. And she talked about the porcupine. I was out with some veterans one time and we had some porcupines making bacon and woke all three of us up immediately. And we went out and I, I can never see a grand entry the same way as, as I, as I did prior to witnessing those porcupines getting it on. But we'll leave that alone for another story. I always wondered how they had little porcupines. Now I know. Uh, but the springtime is not just the changes. And we talked, you know, I mentioned the flooding, the incredible. What I'm hearing is about, about us as a part of the world around us, not us as the center of the world around us. And the Western culture that we're colonized by very much makes the two legged the center of the world, but not just the two legged, but the two legged just from that particularly frontal lobe thinking, not just our mammalian or our, our, our reptilian brain, but from our human brain, the, the big two lobes up here in front, as if that dominates our life and it doesn't. And I, I bring this up because in the wintertime, one of my younger sisters drank a lot for 16 years and we would go look for her in the winter, every morning we'd look for her because she had a lot of places to go and, and even abandoned houses and stuff in the community that her and her boyfriend could go to. But she told me more than once that she didn't feel like a real Indian sometimes living a sober life and living the acculturated life that we'd come to live even on the reservation. And that the only time she felt real was, was when she was on the streets. Now, how intriguing because the old people, like, like you've heard from several different nations already today, but I remember as a child asking one of the old people, what did we call ourselves? Because you heard uh, Shirley's explanation of Athabascan. And he said, eek te we cha, we cha se eek te we on, real people. Not, not by our, our tribal name, that was how we talked about ourselves to other people, to outside people. But we called ourselves real man real woman not real like i'm more real than you are not like that but authentic and, and real and a part of this 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 universe and 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 as we as, as kiwawi and and uh, shirley and, and Teresa all shared we're part of this quote natural world we've made it unnatural to make it imitate our two leggings to make the two leggings uh, become in ch in charge, and so I, I want to speak a little bit of the Wakia, of the thunder beans. Ray spoke of that a, 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 a time ago. Then a little bit of the the four directions, Tate Topa, a little bit of of the earth Unshimaka, a little bit of the of the plants that we're talking about, because all of this is part of life and part of death. And, and medicines gathered in the wrong way or prepared in the wrong way actually actually will harm people. So we can talk about the natural world, but anything that's medicinal can also be dangerous. Water can be dangerous. Uh, taken, diabetes insipidus, maybe some of you have never run into that, but water, water can be dangerous. Air, too much oxygen can be dangerous. Too much helium <laughs> can be goofy. <laughs> but all of these elements, that we live among and imbalance among, uh, and, and they all matter, they all matter. And so I, I, I encourage all that are listening to pay attention to the winds, to feel the Wakian, to feel the thunder beams when they come through. And we've had winds up, they lasted through yesterday, Tuesday through yesterday that were fluctuating between uh, 60 some miles an hour and 105 miles an hour. And believe me, those bring down the widow makers that 
that our sister uh, referenced earlier. And if you don't look up, you won't see what where the trees broke, where, where they where they splintered. You see one right behind your, her there. And, and those can come on you. And when you're cutting wood, uh, you know, if you don't find where to fall it, uh, you can you can trigger something that will injure you or injure someone cutting wood away from you. I, I'm, I'm talking about paying attention to how everything's connected. Then I'm talking, we, we literally have medicine in Dakota on this talk, and we have some crow relatives on this talk that still stay close to their earth. We literally have medicine that will split storms. But anytime we use that medicine to split storms, one of the principal ones among us in the center of that Sundance won't be there the next year. So we don't use it casually. We, we don't use some of our medicine casually because there's a price to pay. And so, so just because we're getting heavily rained on or, or the wind is really strong and, and blowing the, the Sundance tree heavily and stuff, we're not gonna uh, split the storm. We're, we're gonna endure the storm. We're gonna take the soaking. We're gonna take the rain. We're gonna take the wind. Those of us that are in the center holding the tree up, we're going to hold the tree up. We're not going to let it touch the ground. We're going to keep that fallen warrior up as, as we pray. And so I, I, I encourage people to not forget that bef we, we, we're colonized, of course, and yet we're not. And we return to the earth and we come from the earth. And the earth, fire, wind, and water are, are the essential part of our being. And, and we're just a part of this greater, greater, not just collection, because Matakuye, Oyasin, we're all related of relatives. And in just six more weeks, we're going up to the top of Chief Mountain with our Blackfeet relatives. And we're, we're, we're collecting medicines and we're fasting and praying for, for four days, those of us that go up there to gather. But we don't just gather. We, we also fellowship and we pray and we'll sweat twice a day. We'll sweat in the morning, we'll sweat in the evening. And we won't drink any water and we won't take in any food for those four days. So I'm going to tell you, we're going to be some tired pups and kind of strung out as I, uh, as I, as I reach further in, in the decades. I'm a little older than quit my wife said, quit whining. <laughs> as I get older, I find that it gets even even tougher sometimes things that I could just sustain easily as a young man. And yet I welcome, I welcome this. I welcome the change of seasons. I welcome the challenge and the beauty and the coming alive of spring and summer. I, I myself love fall as well. I like when it starts quieting down and and the snow returns to to cover the earth and everything goes inside and we start talking story and we share our winter count. So thank you all for having the courage to live. Thank you uh, everyone for, for sharing uh, these, these awesome stories. And thanks for sharing those, those views. See, I've not seen ferns like that since I was up in the Northwest um, as a child at boarding school. <laughs> and and I, I, the ferns up there just fascinated me as, as a, a, a child growing up. Uh, we didn't have those in the Northern Plains. And here we have them just to the east of us with our relatives, our Anishinaabe relatives. Wow, and probably have them down there with you too, Kiawe, with, with our Tsalagiani relatives. So, so bless you. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Kiawe. Thank all of you that are listening. I hope we can hear from, from some of you now if, if others aren't on the call. And, you, you blessed, you certainly blessed me. And, and I thank you for the energy and, and the movement. But remember that the harsh is as important as the mellow. And, and when, when our kids, I, I take my kids out, and we go up in the mountains and as, as the snow allows us, we had six to 12 inches last night. So no going to the mountains today probably because these aren't roads that are, are plowed. But we saw uh, sandhill cranes. These are five foot tall birds. And my, my grandpa used to tell me that they were all over, but I didn't see any until I was in my forties. The first time I saw them. And I was going from Bear Lake in Utah up, up towards Eastern Idaho on my way back to Montana. So, but we saw a pair, they were paired up and these five foot tall birds out among the cattle and the elk as we were moving up to the high country. And that's when we saw all of those blue jays, Teresa. And, and I first of the blue jays that I saw this year because they don't come down as low as what I live. But, but we find them not that far above us, within a thousand feet of us, 
as we're moving up and, and uh, the pairings of the birds and the coming together. And so I, I have two eagles now that hang out over my sweat, over our sweat. Why do I call it my sweat? I'm just the keeper of it. I'm not the owner of it. Just like that chinupa, that pipe. I, I keep a pipe, but I don't own a pipe. The pipe is always for the oyate. It's always for the people. And so we modify our behavior to live as folks who walk and work with medicine and work with healing and work in both worlds like that beaver. And so the, the trappers that came out and lived among the Blackfeet, they didn't trap on the, among the Blackfeet. They'd have gotten killed because the, 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 the two worlds of the beaver was the most sacred thing. The beaver bundle will be, will be open pretty soon. The thunder bundle will be open even sooner among our Blackfeet relatives. They, didn't, they never killed their own medicine. And so you didn't kill beaver uh, anywhere among the Blackfeet. Other tribes have their own ways. And not that the Blackfeet didn't participate in, in uh, um, collecting pelts, uh, but not, not, not where they lived. They would not. Well, thank you. Thank you, folks. I'm going to bow off now and, and listen to others. Bless you. Anabasi. Dr. Dan and also Teresa and Kiawe for sharing. Um, Steve, do you have anything? Oh, Teresa, I am just letting this wash over me. It's, it's just wonderful. Uh, really, really am uh, feeling, feeling the spirit of our panelists uh, through, right through the Zoom. It's just, it's amazing. So learning and listening really appreciate everyone's uh, share and uh really I, i'm thinking uh, that teresa must be getting uh, some help from the old ones there with her signal being boosted right there in the middle of the woods so this is one i can glimpse of those warlocks where's those where's those uh, those uh ferns i want to see them ferns I, didn't get to, I know that Dan was talking about them, but I didn't get to see them. There they are. Yeah, those are Christmas. I, I moved into this home here in, in town uh, last year, and it was owned by uh, an older woman named Mary. And I didn't realize uh, when I moved in uh, just how many things she had planted in this house over, over decades. And last summer, and a couple of you know this, uh, I logged over 113 different types of flowers. Wow. And ferns uh, all around this house that was built around 1900. Wow. So, uh, springtime here is I've got ferns just a few feet from me here that are just exploding uh, right outside my window. And uh, the flowers, once they start to emerge, it's, it becomes, a, my youngest daughter calls it a fairy land. It's just, uh. it's, it's magical. So that, that springtime for me is uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful time before it gets real hot. Here in the Midwest, some of you know how the humidity just takes over. But right now we're in an interim period, enjoying that. Uh, so that, that's my short share. Thanks. <laughs> You're well, welcome. You. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Um, does anybody in um, on our Zoom would they like to share? Just unmute yourself and start sharing. I'd like to share a story that's been important to me for a long time. There was a man had a piece of land <clears throat> and part of that land was rich and a good soil and lots of water. And part of that land was not so great. It didn't get very much rain and the plants that were there had to struggle to survive. And so he went out and he bought four trees and planted three of the trees in this beautiful 
piece of land and he planted one, there wasn't enough room on, in the rich land. So he planted one of those trees in the area of the ground that wasn't too, too uh, uh, nourishing. <clears throat> and the trees in the good land thrived. They grew tall over the years, lots of foliage. They were beautiful. And the little guy that had been print, planted the soil that wasn't terribly rich had to struggle. And then they got one year where there was a tremendous drought. And all the trees in the beautiful land, the land dried up, there was no rain, and they all died. And the little guy that had been planted over there in the soil that was not nourishing survived mm. it had had to struggle and put its roots way deep into the ground just to to be alive and to me that had a very profound effect especially when i'm working with my patients mm. and help them understand how what may have happened in childhood where they had to struggle has given them strength that they don't even know they have. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. I was um, trying to message Catherine to tell her hello. And uh, I thought she was Catherine Martin from Atna people from Metasta the granddaughter of Katie John. <laughs> so nice to meet you, Catherine. And thank you, Anabasi. Thank you. Uh, I am, I work for the Cowlitz tribe in Vancouver, Washington. Okay. That's my office, my blanket and all the rest of beautiful stuff. Cool. Um, anybody else like to share a story or? Something about their culture or Okay, you might have to listen to me again. Oh, yay, there's Mary Maria. I can't say your last <laughs> name. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. <laughs> yeah, no, <it's> not. <laughs> Thank you. It's, uh, I'm enjoying springtime here. I'm right beside the Arctic Ocean. Oh, wow. The Gulf of Delta region. Yeah, and I was here, I was listening to what you were saying before. And uh, But before here in Palatok, I was working in Fort Good Hope. And I was so much remembering when the river ice broke and the big, huge blocks of ice. <laughs> oh, that. That's fantastic on the Mackenzie River. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying the springtime. There is already 24 hours uh, sun, so we have a midnight sun. Everybody's talking about going hunting, going welling, welling fishing. They are waiting for the gooses to come. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm enjoying because there is a joy in the community about going on the land and do traditional uh, activities or cultural, you know, events. So thank you for this time and I can share how I'm living in spring down here. The six six are out too. So I have a family of six six right across my window. And I feed them all the time. I shouldn't because I know there are, there's wildlife, but I I can't. I have to share some of my food with them. So they get used to. Okay. So in the morning, if I don't go down and take at least some bread, I have the family at, at downstairs. <laughs> they don't, whoever knows what the six six are in the Arctic, they, they will know it. <laughs> so <laughs> I can hear them screaming, where's breakfast, you know, and, uh, and I really enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maria. We appreciate your story. And 
<clears throat> You're down near Bessel? <clears throat> Maria? Yeah. Yes, I'm in the Bofo Delta region, way oh. beyond the tree lines. Yes. So, <laughs> way beyond the tree lines. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've I've been there. I've been there a few times, and what I notice about Bethel, wherever there's land, something's built on it. But there's a lot of waterways there, right? So a lot of little marshy areas, and and not any big trees like we have in the interior. But it's a very beautiful place. A lot of really um, great people there. Anyway, thank Beautiful. you. Yeah, thank no, you. And they, they, they laugh about me when I'm going to Inovic and Inovic has trees, okay? And yeah, we yeah. have nothing. We, we <laughs> so they always make fun of me and says, Maria, don't you feel suffocated here in Inovic <laughs> with so many trees? <laughs> <laughs> they always make fun of me about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Um, How about? Okay. Hi, June. Buju, buju, nindewema agani duk benesia kwe indigo. June blue indigenous cars, ajajak and do dame gawaba gana cognin dun jaba, anishinabe nakoma so gichida kwe. So hello, my beautiful relatives. Uh, thank you for sharing your stories. Um, I'm a grandmother of seven um, and uh, I'm a third generation veteran. You know, my dad and all his brothers, um, except for one, there, four of them were veterans, my grandfather and myself. It was, uh, I, you know, I, I really don't even realize like what it was like until I, I now have begun to tell that story um, about that and that, you know, all indigenous veterans. And so um, thinking about that, like how that was to grow up like that with everybody around you um, being warriors and, uh, you know, and about my thought process. So I, um, <clears throat> I didn't grow up culturally. I, uh, um, it wasn't, you know, and, and childhood trauma, severe childhood trauma, uh, lost my brother who was 37 and my sister 42 to alcohol and drugs. I'm the oldest. My, my youngest sister is the one living. So we didn't grow up with that way of life. Um, you know, uh, you know, but my, my family worked hard. They were, they were black layers. You're about black layers. And um, so just grew up like that, like not, not knowing my culture, but I had um, the great honor when I was 31 to go to a sweat lodge. And um, I, you know, have heavy drinker, you know, um, but it, when I was 31, I uh, went to a sweat lodge and I, I realized that, and I talk about this, it brought my spirit back to my body because my spirit was, um, I was told by an elder that my spirit, um, you know, walked alongside me, but I feel like sometimes my spirit was traveling in other um, realms and other levels of, um, you know, and out there, but, um, and, but when I went to that sweat lodge, that ceremony, um, I, you know, it, I, I knew who I was. I know who I am now and, and it changed, it changed my life. And, um, and, uh, you know, now my, my grandchildren, uh, go to sweat lodges and stuff like that. My son is 40. Um, unfortunately he's in prison right now. So, um, you know, it's, it's really been, uh, an interesting, um, journey, but, you know, my life, once I went to that, and I had to claw my way back into my culture. I'm the first one to do that in my family because my grandfather went to boarding school. My dad went to parochial school, which is just 12 hours of nuns and priests beating you. You don't, you don't live there, but 
you know, you, you get handled uh, not very well. But one of the stories, um, you know, I, I did have, you know, Clyde Belcourt is my cousin. Clyde and Vernon Belcourt are my cousin. I'm from White Earth Nation, I'm Crane Clan. I'm Thunderbird woman, I'm Benacea Quay. I'm a protector of the people. I, I speak nation to nation um, and, and speak for the people because I'm Crane Clan, um, one of the leadership clans. Um, you know, I'll, these things were thrust upon me and um, I didn't even know what they meant when I was told about these things. Um, but, uh, you know, I carry that responsibility and that warriorship for my people. So I went to Sweat Lodge um, and being in an authentic um, community, I uh, went to many Sweat Lodges, Natives Against Heroin. And a lot of the people were coming out of addiction um, you know, women had been sex trafficked and uh, men were coming out of prison, women coming out of prison, every, you know, all these things. And, and I felt more at home there than, you know, I work for the U University of Minnesota right now, um, but I feel more at home. I felt more at home there than I do, of course, at the U of M and even with some of my own people. So I can relate to that woman that was homeless and saying like she lived and that was more, she felt more Indian like that. So I understand that. Um, but one of the things I wanted to share is a story about addiction, if I can. And one of the stories is, is um, there were two women riding in a car and it was two sisters um, and they, they pulled up to a gas station and the one that was driving got out and was was going to put some gas in her car and a spirit came up to her and he said, Hey, Hey, I got something and you're not going to feel any pain. And she said, no, nah, I'm good. You know, just going to fill up my gas tank. He's like, no, I got something. You will not feel any pain. You're going to feel so good. And she was like, no, I don't need that. And, um, and then he got more insistent. And then the more she pushed back, he got bigger and bigger and bigger. And the spirit was a black spirit. It got bigger and bigger. The more she refused it, it got stronger. And so um, her sister got out of the car and said, are you okay? What's going on? And she said, go get the warriors, go get the warriors. And so the sister ran and got, went to the village and got the warriors and the warriors came. They had the bows and arrows. They had the axes. They had everything that they needed to fight this spirit. And, um, and they came at it and the more they tried to hurl things at it and they, they tried to um, kill it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so she told her sister, she goes, go back to the village and get the elders, go get the elders and the medicine people. So she went back and she got the elders and the medicine people. And as they were coming up, they were singing, they were praying, they're playing their drums and that vibration went throughout the universe. And as they got closer to that spirit, that spirit started to shrink like this and it got smaller and smaller and it got to a manageable um, uh, bundle. And they gave that bundle to an elder to hold on to. They didn't kill it, but they gave that, that bundle to an elder and that elder was responsible for taking care of that spirit and so, um, you know, for me, as I know personally, like um, our, our ceremonies, our songs, you know, I've been to Sundance, so I just want to say thank you to my brother who is a Sundancer. I, I've told people, I said, um, they're, they're doing that for me. They have unconditional love for me. Gi and unconditional love. They, are, they didn't say, June, if you do this and I'll Sundance for you. They do it for everybody unconditionally. They do that. And, and they aren't doing it to, um, you know, to impress anybody. Because I tell you, after an hour and, or two hours of 102 degrees, <laughs> you'd be like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I ain't going to do this. But they're out there for four days. They don't eat or drink. And, 
And I seen some of those young men and the older men too dancing out there. And, and, and I just cried because it, that unconditional love, like that is so pure and it's so beautiful. And I really appreciate that. So um, Chimi Gwich, but um, you know, our ceremonies, our songs are what um, help to heal us. And I, I heard that when I was doing sweat lodges, what they said is we want our ceremonies back and we want our community back. They kept on saying that we need our community and we need our ceremonies because a lot of those, um, those ones like myself, had been pushed away. We've also been pushed away because we don't know the language, because we're not enrolled, because um, we didn't grow up in the res. So I, I made that vow. I said, I will do everything I can to lift up my people, to let them know that they are beautiful no matter where they're at in their journey, because I've pretty much been everywhere on that journey. So I made that vow to the creator and to my ancestors that I will do that and make sure that I never hurt my people with my own culture. I will never do that. And so, um, you know, I worked at Enda Young, which is a homeless shelter for children. I did that for six years. That was something else. It was a homeless shelter. And it was just like, it like, broke open my spirit. Like it just, uh, that was another huge ceremony. So I think, again, I wanna thank you everybody. Um, you know, those ones going to ceremonies, they, they're doing this all over the world. I tell people, they, people, indigenous people are holding ceremonies all over the world. They're bringing mother earth back into balance and they're sacrificing for humanity. They're doing those things for us unconditionally. So I just want to say chi miigwech. Thank you so much. I honor you all. Gazag and I have so much love for you. Miigwech. To the one that was just sharing, um, next week, if you subscribe to what's going on with HETC, Teresa Brewington and a panel will be doing a group on lateral violence in Indian country. So it might be important if you can tune in um and share on there as well the, some of the issues you talked about um and that's really important <clears throat> to link and truly get our communities back what does that look like our communities how we would care for each other and how we would behave and things like that so miigwech for sharing mm -hmm. i'm anabasi uh june for sharing i, I appreciate you um I, I could listen to you forever. <laughs> I could come learn from you. I might fly down there today. No. Anyway, Anabasi, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, anybody else like to share? How about uh, Tom Delaney? Is Tom Delaney there? Oh, now you're picking on me, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just saw you pop up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you turn your camera on, Tom. That's what happens sometimes. Oh, <laughs> you know, I got to stay invisible. Yeah. So, I'll just say I'm Tom Delaney from the Minnesota Department of Education, and I work on uh, projects to help uh, American Indian students with disabilities uh, mm -hmm. graduate and go on to whatever they choose and prefer to do after high school. So I just came here to learn today and I am well learning so much and um, I'm just really grateful to all of you and uh, everyone who's speaking, Shirley, June, both Dr. Fosters, Drs. Foster, both of them, just an amazing pair of people. Mm -hmm. and, and Steve, keeping it cool and running the show and T out there, thank you too so much. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I have the authority to speak officially on behalf of the Minnesota Department of Education, but I will tell you that personally, uh, it is just a great honor. And I, I really appreciate this and I look forward to more opportunities. So I'm, I'm grateful for all of you to choosing to use your time and your lives in your words um, in this way to, to share knowledge that uh, hopefully uh, 
can improve everyone's lives, whatever your situation is. And in my case too, um, this is real knowledge for application and, and helping out kids uh, in the state of Minnesota and there are others from other states and give them a sense of future as well and affirm their identity and frankly try to make up for some history where the identity was torn asunder and that meaning and that language and that's that's just tears apart you know every part part of your being but it, i think that different ways are possible and um, we cannot change the past but it's important that we can own it and learn from it and we we have kids right now so let's reach them and help them and and, and give them the gift of hope, I think, as adults, so often we bear things because we don't want to pass it on to the kids. So we can do that. Let's give them gifts. You know, like like I said, June, you have hard stories, but mm -hmm. you have those stories of hope. <clears throat> so that's such an amazing power to, to give anyone is, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. this is hard, but also more importantly, there's, there's a future, there's a hope for you. So, and you will find your song and, and, and do your thing. So I'll just say thank you very much, Chi Miigwech, mm -hmm. and uh, that's good enough for me. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, uh, Tom. Um, we have a few more minutes here if anybody else would like to share. Caroline looks like she'd like to say something, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Shirley. I was just thinking about, I, I don't know uh, that I really have a story uh, to share, but I was just thinking about being very small. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, I... Caroline, you're, you're, you muted yourself, I think. We lost you there. Oh, am right. I there now? You're yeah. now oh. Way. Thank you. Uh, I grew up in San Diego um, a long time ago when it was still pretty uh, rural, even in town. You know, it was all dairy farms when my grandfather um, was there. All of Mission Valley was dairy farms. And when I was a little girl, the dairy farms had been moved out, but we still had horses there. And at one point we were living up on the top of the, the rim of the canyon right there. And I remember being very small. And, uh, and my dad said, daughter, let's go, let's go. I wanna take you down in the canyon and I want to um, show you some things. And I was little and he took me down. He always would put me on his shoulders. He always would carry me up on his shoulders and I'd put my hands right here on his head. Otherwise I'd <laughs> put him like this, you know? And I'd hold on to his head and he would go checking down the side of the canyon like this, right? And I remember that day and I remember my dad stopping suddenly on the path and he said Shh, daughter look and he pointed ever so slowly and there was fox and there was fox on the path and it was the first time i had ever seen fox okay. and he's telling me you know and then i heard this cry in the sky and he just he looked up and i looked up in unison and it was red tail hawk mm. and my dad taught me about red tail hawk and um and as and in San Diego, it's warm very early. I mean, by the time it's April, it's getting to be warm, you know, and we had this canoe and we lived right up. I don't know if you know San Diego at all, but we lived on the canyon rim above Mission Valley. Mm. And and it's not the way now because they've made that road big and they cut away the can, you know, it's very steep now, but it used to be my dad would take that canoe and he would put it over his head like a, you know, like if he brought it down, you wouldn't see his face. But he would carry this canoe and he and my mom and I would go down and it was this, this switchback road, right? And we would carry that canoe down, not me, I was little, all the way down into the San Diego River. And I don't even know now if you can get directly to the water. They've made walking paths, jogging trails, condominiums, I don't know. But we uh. used to go down to the San Diego River and my dad would put this canoe in and we would get in and we would just drift all the way down to the bay. And we would drift in the bay and we would... Um, 
paddle around and I remember one time he let me get out and swim in the bay and my mom freaked out was, so I got back in that didn't last very long but but then he would row and paddle all the way back up all the way back up and then carry that thing all the way back up the canyon to the house and I just I remember for me that was spring watching the flowers bloom my mother would always plant bulbs and the flowers would come up and and I remember there being a bird nest in the tree and my cat went out and my cat stole the egg out of the bird nest and knocked <laughs> it on the ground. And I was so little and I was so upset with my cat. And I remember having a stern conversation with my cat about, <laughs> you know, I was three or four years old, but um, I just remember, I remember my dad and that canyon. And the first time I remember being aware of red tail hawks cry and, and meeting Fox. So thank you for sharing. And thank you for having here to, to listen and to learn from you all. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Okay, we have maybe, according to my clock, it's uh, about eight minutes to noon. I'm sure it's later wherever everybody's at. Don't know if anybody else from Alaska is on. Um, is there somebody else that has something for us? Okay, you're gonna to have to listen to me then. <laughs> um, as everybody is talking, um, <clears throat> I looked at the chat and uh, Dan said that he was talking about George Atla and Rose Atla and um, George Atla has passed away. He, he was a dog musher up here and he was influential in the dog musher world and there's a a film about him that was made some time ago. Um, and then Rose Atla um, is one of my aunts and they're from Huslia. <clears throat> well, I just want to say that. And then when uh, June was talking, um, I started thinking of um, something a healer said to me when she was working on me. Um, she was doing something called postural integration on me. I was a volunteer at a workshop and uh, laid up there in front of all the participants. <clears throat> and she'd asked me, um, what was I experiencing? You know, what was hurting, whatever. And anyway, um, one of the things she said uh, is that you're, she started manipulating one part of, you know, where I, told her my shoulder was stuck, you know, and but she, <clears throat> and I had memories, you know, memories of um, being burned and the sensation of being burned um, by hot coffee, getting coffee at age four from my dad, because he asked me to get coffee. You know, would you ask your four-year-old to go get one of those metal pots of coffee and pour you a cup of coffee. Well, dad was, he was kind of backwards. <laughs> anyway, trying to please my dad, I did try to get him coffee and wound up dumping coffee on my chest, on my shoulder and then part of my chest. And uh, back then that was tan in Alaska. And uh, we lived in front of the hospital and uh, my, uh, <clears throat> As I was getting coffee, I dumped it on me and started screaming. And the babysitter, my dad worked nights and was downstairs, and the babysitter had her back turned to me. But she turned around, and my dad came running up, and they brought me to the hospital. But I'd never had memory of what happened. I, at age 36, um, for those of you in recovery, I, I had learned how to block so many things out that I blocked the whole burnout um, all my life. And I walked with my shoulder hunched to protect that side all the time. And uh, I'm a bead worker and a skin sewer. And, you know, I use my hands, my shoulders always like this. And um, it got stuck one time. Anyway, she had told me that um, 
after she was manipulating that part of me, she had told me that, um, let me turn this phone off. Um, she said that your body remembers things that your mind forgets. And I thought of that when uh, June was talking and and remembered about how much how many things I stuffed. Um, I was going to tell you too that I was by the river. I drove to the Tanana River the other day, and I have a keen sense of smell, and I could smell the water. I don't know if any of you ever smelled the water. And this is, there's no traffic out there or anything like that, but I could smell the water. And I just smiled. I was like thanking the creator for allowing me to smell the water. You know, sometimes you go out there and you, you can't smell the water or there's boats or there, you know. And I was like, wow, thank you. Thank you for letting me be alive and let me smell the water. Um, and I, I wanted to say something about the birds singing. You know, um, <clears throat> we have stories about birds, our spring birds, and the the robin. You know, when you hear the robin sing up here, he's singing "Dodo silins golkoi ziga til zut til zut sisni sisni." And what there's a whole story behind it, but we only got a you know, like a minute and a half. Um, but what he's saying is that his um, brother-in-law tried to fit, feed him fish guts. And in that song, that story, the robin is flying away. He refused to eat the fish guts and told his brother-in-law, I'm not hungry right now. And as he's flying away, he's laughing and singing this song. And it's this is a story that they tell tell us, you know, tell children. And it's it's a lesson in um, you know, not to laugh at the food people try to feed feed you, you know, and be thankful that there's food. Because if you do something like break that kind of uh rule kind of rule um you laugh at the food um there's repercussions for that right so what does the robin eat now <laughs> worms look like fish guts <laughs> so there's repercussions and uh teaching us not to laugh you know laugh about um laugh at people, laugh at their food, laugh at whatever. Um, it's okay to laugh, but, you know, laugh, laugh at the appropriate time and the appropriate situation. <laughs> anyway, I want to say, Anabasi, thank you all for um, being here and participating. And for those that spoke and those that didn't speak, um, I hope, I hope it was a good session. This is the last, um, session that we'll be having in this series and um i was gonna um uh ask someone to say uh closing prayer for us if that's okay steve do you have anything else no we we uh i'll just have a couple of a uh, couple of short announcements after the blessing so okay and then i was i was gonna ask june june would you say a blessing a closing blessing for us I know you can. Uh, ancestors, creator, I want to thank you for this beautiful day, for this beautiful gathering. I feel so good right now. This want to say chi miigwech to Mother Earth and everything that she provides for us, the beauty uh, ever forgiving, always, always supplying us with everything that we need. 
Thank you for the beautiful water that sings those songs, the trees that, that talk to us. I want to say chi miigwech to the elders here um, that have spoken and, and filled my spirit. I thank you, say chi miigwech to Steve um, for the wonderful facilitation that he always does and the good heart he brings in. Uh, I hope you all have a good day. And um, just want to thank you again, Mikwich. Anubasi. Steve? Thank you so much, June, for closing us out. And, and Shirley, what a wonderful lead today. And to the panelists, I just, I end to the participants. Uh, yeah. Really enjoyed it. And what, a, what a strong finish. Um, yeah. Oh, boy. I, I feel good too, June. So. Thank you to everyone. I um, want to just give you uh, just a couple of previews. We've got next month, we'll have uh, our very own Teresa Suvarell is going to be doing a behavioral health webinar on uh, native diet and how it, how it affects health and wellness. And uh, be sure and tune in for that because she's just got a wealth of knowledge and experience. Uh, we're also going to be featuring a, uh, a traditional native storytelling event that will run uh, monthly, June, July, and August, with our very own Calway Bone and another of our consultants uh, that will be doing a, a traditional uh, native story, to, virtual native story, to, uh, voices of Native American ancestors. So look for those on your, on your list, sir. We'd love to have you join us. Um, it's been wonderful today. I want uh, yeah. to wish everybody well. And until next time, uh, stay safe. Stay healthy and stay connected, everyone. Oh. And, and don't go to Black's Beach unless you want to get tanned. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Doc Foster. Thanks, everyone. Dokja. Thank you. Thanks.